welcome back to the channel and as you can see I'm filming this in yet another new uh, location because I'm filming this from a caravan at Filey in Yorkshire because I'm coming on holiday and as you can see from out of the back window it is mist it is windy um, so classic British summer holiday weather for this time in September anyway it's the as I say it is now September so it's time to look back to the my August solar generation and my usage figures so before I go on a couple of things first of all this caravan park um, is massive yet none of the caravans have solar panels on them and you think why when there's fields just down the road covered in solar panels plaster the roofs you already have with solar panels first be far better anyway and the other thing is um, if you are enjoying these videos including the thousand or so of you who've watched my two year recap uh, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already it massively helps out the channel and if you want to keep informed about solar panels, solar energy and any other sort of green tech in, from my own experience and also the science behind it please hit that subscribe button as I say it will massively help me out and a huge thank you to the 855 of you who already have uh, subscribed okay so let's get on to the figures and the first graph so this is the generation graph for August so throughout August we generated 517 kilowatt hours which is up about five to seven percent on last August so those who've been watching these videos for a while will know that 2024 has been worse for solar generation than 2023 from my experience uh, but these last two months July which was roughly the same in July last year and August has been a little bit better so it did indicate that we might have had some form of summer but uh, it still wasn't great. So we still only had a, we had a few days where we only generated four kilowatt hours, but then we had some better days where we generated up to twenty eight kilowatt hours as the max. Um, this is a little bit lower than our generation or our peak generation in um, June and beginning of July, when in a day we can make thirty two kilowatt hours. Um, but that's just because the days are now getting shorter. So the question is what happened to that 517 kilowatt hours how much did we pay for our import and all those sort of things so in august we actually had quite a heavy usage month and i'm not entirely sure why i think we might have just been doing more cooking with the oven and things like that um, but we used 552 kilowatt hours and this is bearing in mind that my Heating is done by gas, even though it's off, so my hot water is also gas, and our hob is also uh, gas as well. So we used 552.5 kilowatt hours. And using the flux tariff, which is about um, 12, p, 12 to 14p for import during three hours in the night, which I used to hold my battery, we ended up paying for those 500 and 52 kilowatt hours just 12 pounds and 87 pence and we imported about 90 kilowatt hours so if i was to pay the price cap of uh, about 22p for those 252 kilowatt hours that i used it would have cost us nearly uh, 59 pounds Instead, as I say, it only cost us £12.87. Uh, so that means an overall saving for having solar panels of £46.06 for the month. And as far as the breakdown of our energy usage was concerned from import, of those 91 kilowatt hours we imported, 84.69 were done um, on the low tariff in the middle of the night. Six kilowatt hours were imported during the usual daytime rate, which is at the price cap. And for the first month ever, we had to import at the peak period, although it was less than 0.4 of a kilowatt hour, which cost us the whole a total sum of 12p. And that was on a day when um, I had both my ovens on and multiple other things. Um, I was boiling the kettle on time because I was catering for our 
Nuevo Tango Festival and I was cooking up six and a half kilos of Mediterranean mixed veg and five kilos of pasta um, so I was boiling the kettle for that so um, during that time we had a lot of load on the house so we couldn't rely purely on the battery output and enough power so we had to import a small amount from the grid. As far as export is concerned um, we exported 300 and uh, 78 of the 517 we generated and that was split into 303 exported at the daily rate which is just above 15p hence why I import overnight because it's cheaper to import overnight and I get more money for the export than that and then at the um, peak period between 4 and 7 p.m. I exported another 75 kilowatt hours so I don't have any I don't drain my battery during the, um, I suppose, the expensive part to um, export um, because I don't think it's worth it for a few extra pence every day. Um, but um, so this is just uh, general usage. So from the daily rate I um, received from Octopus, and if you want to give them after fill cold, please do. Thank you to those who already have. Um, I have received £75.71 from the uh, daytime rate and £17.15 from the more um, expensive export time of the day. So about 20% of my export was done at the peak period, which is ideal. So that uh, t uh, sums to a total of £62.87. £62 uh, my octopus bill actually says £62.99. So there's a little, tiny discrepancy there, but it's, you know, percent um, or units of percent. It um, shows my spreadsheet is actually working fairly accurately. However, what I'm now considering is moving to Octopus Intelligent Go in September because we're not getting much generation during the four till seven period just because the sun is going down. And... Um, so we can benefit from and we're importing more at night therefore we can benefit from the even cheaper rates that intelligent go offers of about seven to eight p per kilowatt hour and the export tariff you can get on intelligent go is still 15p so um, we'll be switching to that in the coming weeks so the next one of these videos that i make will cover that anyway so if you add our money saved which was the 46 pounds and 87 or sorry, £46.06 to the um, £62.87 um, I received from Octopus for SEG. That means a monthly payback on my solar panels of £108.93. And if, again, if you watch my previous video, you'll know I have 12 Q cell solar panels on the roof peaking at 4.65 kilowatts um, with a 5 kilowatt um, solid hybrid inverter and a five kilowatt hour pure drive battery which cost eight thousand five hundred pounds pretty much exactly two years ago so the final two graphs as always this is my comparing year on year generation so you can see the gray is this year while the orange is last year blue we should ignore for this month because i only had the solar panels for a week in august 2022 so as you can see, the grey peak is slightly higher than the orange peak, indicating we had slightly higher generation this uh, uh, th this year. It'd be interesting to see what parity we get in September. Looking at this graph, bear in mind that 2023 and 2022 were pretty much exactly the same. And finally, here's the graph that shows my payback per month. And as you can see, that we've got the general trend this year that is much higher than last year because I'm getting paid more for my SAG. Electricity prices have gone up, so I'm uh, it would have cost I'm sa effectively saving more on my bill each month from having the solar panels. Uh, but as you can see, we're starting to come down off the peak of summer, so it's only going to be downhill for the rest of 2024 20, uh, now as far as solar generation and payback on my solar panels comes in. Anyway, just thank you for watching. Um, as I say, please hit that subscribe button um, to keep up to date with all my videos. And I'll see you in another video very soon.